All right, so welcome to the Insomniac Museum uh, for the third bonus episode of Developer Commentary. My name is Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And uh, this is going to be kind of weird because we're going to be answering questions from the, the YouTube thread and then just sort of exploring and seeing what we're doing. Uh, we're going to try to make this so we can cut it into something entertaining. Unfortunately, our last uh, attempt at recording this resulted in horrible, horrible failure, right, Tony? It's just straight unusable, unusable footage, I think. And the, the main problem with it was that, what, we, uh, we said pretty much everything that needs to be said in the little uh, uh, dialogue boxes. There's just nothing yeah, else. Yeah, there's very little it. left unexplained here, I think, um, for us to really provide commentary on. It's hard to provide commentary on commentary. It isn't an easy proposition, for sure. So I think we're going to be cutting this episode up a lot more than normal, which means that, uh, you know, you you may see some jarring cuts, but just, you know, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Uh, so the first question we've got on the site is uh, from HRWIKI2. HR Wiki, maybe? I remember there being a yellow car in the museum that was just kind of there with no explanation. Is there a story behind it? Uh, yeah, actually. I think we kind of touched on it a little bit when we were in the desert level. Yes, uh, and in the ice level as well. Right, uh, but we didn't actually explain too much. So this was, uh, uh, in the desert level, we wanted to give players a mechanism for shortcutting around, since we knew it was a huge level and you, you move rather slowly. And this was before we came up with the charge boots. Uh, and you, you, you can still see a descendant of the yellow car in the, uh, uh, in the desert and ice levels, uh, just slightly different, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we found the mining cart, uh, when we were in Grelvin. Right. Uh, which was a little bit like it, but it wasn't quite this, this vehicle. But yeah, the idea was a fast transport in the crystal levels, if I remember correctly. Absolutely, and yeah. There's like the red car is the same sort of deal. Yeah, this was all done by Tim, and I guess these were different iterations of, uh, of this vehicle, uh, and then later iterations of the vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure if this one has it or not, but the one in the game actually does. You can you can kind of settle in and try to mine for rare titanium. That was going to be a bigger uh, mechanic in the game, except that you know we sort of ran out of time. Right, and it was also in the one level where we were already super, super far behind. Yes. And cutting things uh, just just to get it in memory. And Tim had a lot of stuff on his plate, too. So, you know, he yeah. he had the hypnomatic and the, uh, just a whole bunch of other things to do. So, uh, you know, it just it ended up getting not cut, but really marginalized. And then we came up with the, uh, the charge boots to kind of make up the difference in movement speed. Red's the name asks, I have a few questions. What was what's with these squirrels and hacksaws? Why was the jet ski level cancelled? Why was the block man so evil? And why does Ratchet's ship float randomly in the level in the corner next to the gravity tower? Um, do you remember the squirrels and hacksaws? Um No, not really. Um I think it was just a throwaway line in one of the commentaries. Did we mention it? or I think somebody just said it as a throwaway line on a commentary. You know when the little speech bubbles? Oh, I see. I think it was just a joke. I don't think there's anything to it, really. Yeah. I mean, that sort of thing happened a lot. Like, someone would just put something in on a fit of whimsy, and then people would bring it up in later games, and, you know, it just sort of became a meme. I know that happened a lot on the forums back in the day, like with the Magic 8-Ball and stuff. Uh, what do you think, Tony? That sounds about right. I don't think there's anything of particular significance to it uh, when, it, when it got written down. That's pretty much all it takes, really. It just has to get written down, and then, you know, it takes on a life of its own, so to speak. So the next question is, why was the jet ski level cancelled? So the... Uh, if I remember correctly, the jet ski was an earlier version of the hydro pack, which uh, which was what we talked about that got cut in this game. Do you remember that? Um, I remember the hydro pack. I don't remember anything about the jet ski because I don't think it got anywhere past design. 
No, it was. To be honest with you. It got into uh, like early prototyping during pre-production phase, but it wasn't one of the gadgets we decided to go forward with for an you know for an actual uh, level. And the main reason for that was because we would have to make an entire level just to deal with a jet ski gadget. Like it would have replaced racing as uh, the hover bike racing as the racing mechanics. So uh, I think we just decided that. It was it was easier for us to make the levels, you know, and make them look really good uh, for a hover bike race, and sort of much more difficult to do it for a jet ski. Uh, okay, uh, so what's that weird little model on the roof of the museum? Uh, it's, that one might be in Ratchet Three because I I don't see it up here, but uh, I think if I if I know exactly what you're talking about, you can post in the comments if I'm getting it wrong, but. Uh, Basically, when when I built the museum's mesh, uh, some of the walls poked out of the top of the the ceiling, and that's really all you're seeing is just a little cube that I never deleted, but should have. Uh, nothing particularly exciting, uh, but I guess that's the theme of this uh, this episode, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I think that's a pretty common thread. This is going to be like a two-minute-long episode, I think. Yeah. You know what you should do, Tony? What should I do? You should make more fun of me. Like, just uh, mock me for stuff. Wow, you died in the level where there's nothing. <laughs> you just died. Just like that, Tony. Just like that. Uh, and, oh, and here's another ship. I think this is closer to the the, the one that made it into the final game. So, uh, the next question is... Uh, why is the block man so evil? Because um, it says down, or rather, Tony, you say down here at the bottom, don't feel too sorry for the block man, though. He's evil. Uh, once again, I think that was just sort of a throwaway line. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of sad that this guy is just standing here getting hit for all eternity, but uh, I just, you know, I wanted people to feel a little better in kind of a funny way. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything beyond that. Um, yeah. Do you know what he's talking about with Ratchet's ship floating randomly in the level next to the gravity tower? <clears throat> that I do know. Uh, if you go out to the balcony, all right, I'm and going. then you look out towards the, it's like way, way down low, uh, out by the balcony. Over here. Uh, yeah. So you go into first-person mode, and if you look around, you might have to jump over the railing. But if you look down and to the right of the tower, I think. So, like this? Yeah, just go to the left. It should be around here somewhere. Anyway, I know what it is. Uh, the thing about the ship being way down in the corner and all that. Oh, there it is. You, you kind of saw it. If you back up a little bit. It's, uh, well, it's, it's somewhere. But the thing about the ship is every level has to have a ship. That's just the way the levels in Ratchet and Clank work. The ship has to be spawned in the level or else the game will not work kind of thing the whole every every level assumes that there's a ship and so since every level has to have a ship when the level is first loaded up it just creates the ship and the wings and the hull and all that kind of stuff and it's all done out automatically because the ship can be customized in any sorts of ways so that's just when the level's created grabs all the ship parts spawns the ship at zero 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 i think right well, normally what we do is we place uh, a locator in the level to say this is where the ship is, spawn all the ship stuff here. But if there is no ship locator, it just spawns it at zero, 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 and that's where the ship lives. So since the ship locator isn't placed in this level because we don't want you to ever get on the ship, but the ship has to exist in the level, it's just spawned at zero, zero, zero in the world. Yes, at one point in the in the development of the Insomniac Museum, we actually did have a ship. Uh, I it don't might be know. on the left. It might not be that way, but it's somewhere. Let me try to get over by the gravity tower because that's where the comment seems to think it is. Uh, I'm gonna try not. Well, that's to the fall gravity off. tower behind you. Gravity tower is right there, right? Or are they talking about? Oh, maybe it's over there. Who knows? I just want to get some footage of it just in case. Oh, there it is. So, 
So I'll uh, pull this out. So yeah, so there's Ratchet Ship floating. And it doesn't have any of the wings and stuff because since it doesn't show up, why would it bother assembling all of that? Do you want to do anything else or just call it a day for the museum? Um, do we have any other general questions? Those are all of the questions that I saw in the... in the. Not about the museum, just in general, about things that we didn't cover or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, well, I've got that question about Cinder's boobs, but I don't think we want to put that on here. No, I don't think that has anything to do with this. Yeah, I mean, if we don't have anything, I guess we're just... I think we should just call it done. But, I mean, I guess... If we don't have anything else... Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're done. So that's all we got. Um... There weren't any other questions, but if you uh, if you missed asking a question, feel free to email it to us via the site or uh, post it to the global comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, for developer commentary, the final, final episode of Ratchet & Clank 2, my name is Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time.